He was doing Gretchen's senior year in high school. Um, one day, she came talk to she came to me and asked me, and told me about that um, her AP French class has a uh, exchange program um, during spring break, and she asked me if she can go. On April six, I I got a call in the morning. I got a call from my husband. And he spoke in the very uh, scared voice, and then he spoke to me in the in Chinese. He said something happened to Gretchen. Gretchen was a senior in high school and traveling uh, during her spring break to France as part of a school trip. Um, she was at a restaurant, and unfortunately, she has a, a shellfish allergy. Um, and was given some kind of seafood uh, and then ended up going into cardiac arrest, anaphylactic shock, and uh, resulting in an anoxic brain injury. We had no idea what's the difference, what is traumatic brain injury, what is anoxic brain injury. I would, as far as from, coming from my view, I was very naive. I had no idea what it is. All I heard, all I know was, okay, four minutes. No breathing for a minute. People can su can su can survive. You know, four minute in the water, no problem. I'm sure my my daughter will come out of it, no problem. In France, the doctor keeps telling us that there's really nothing else we can do medically to bring her back. So you just have to think about letting her go, and then go on with your life, right? So, but. We insisted, so finally she's back and she's awake, and we thought that was it. She's awake, so it must be good now, right? From now on. But you know, little did we know that you know, that, that shutdown caused so much more damage to her uh, uh, normal ability that puts her in this position. All we know was she had brain injury and she was heavily sedated. She started to having what they call storming. Um, she was moving a lot, she was kicking a lot. Her leg was constantly kicking. She wasn't responsive. And you know, she, was, she couldn't eat by mouth. So she, at the time when she came back home, she was already starting to lose a lot of weight. And it's just not the, the Gretchen I recognize. She had, um, um, she had, you know, very severe contracture. Her knee was all the way up here. They are then able to bring it down because there was some calcification of bone that just she's unable to bring. They are able to bring it down, and then her, you know, her hands start to turn inward. And they only so there's only so much that this hospital can do. This doctor told us that based on his experience with his prior patient, um, CNS might uh, will help younger patient that's more closer to Gretchen's age. And so we we visited Bakersfield facility, and we toured the main facility. We also toured the uh, the uh, inpatient apartment, and then we. We, we also visit some other facility and we just compare that there's no comparison. We had to send her to CNS because we feel, you know, this, the, the, the facility and the, the equipment and all the, the therapy that we were, that we learned, we feel that she's gonna gain a lot more than compared to other places. Uh, when Gretchen came, she was extremely introverted just by the fact that she wasn't engaging. She had her head down. Um, now she greets everyone. She says hello. She uh, is engaged in our music group uh, on Wednesdays and stays for lunch on that day so that she can interact with other patients. Um, she has a couple peers in the clinic that she has regular sessions with and they, they have a little bit of banter back and forth. Um, but Gretchen 
I think she'd still probably say she's an introvert, but has gained so many of those skills that allow her to, to communicate with others and, and go beyond just her being focused on her own little world. Once Gretchen started engaging more in therapy, we could really tailor it to, to pulling out her interests, her needs. So one of the first um, things we tackled was her communicating preferences. So I'd give her two choices and pictures of the different choices and she'd turn her head to which item um, or activity she wanted to do. So that allowed her to advocate um, for how she was spending her time, uh, food preferences, all of these things that before were just being um, decided for her, she now was able to use her head movements to determine um, what she was what she was wanting at that moment. Gretchen's parents have been incredibly involved in her care, extremely supportive, um, building her her own lady cave in the back uh, area of their house or the back part of their property, um, so that she has that independence that. Uh, her own space. They've brought her to and from therapy. At first it was five days a week, um, over an hour each way, just that time commitment. Um, they're also extremely supportive emotionally for Gretchen and, and understanding the different challenges that, that has come with the, this injury and not being able to predict the future. I am responsible for taking her to the CNS every morning. So there's an hour of driving. So in that car for an hour, I keep talking to her, make her talk back to me. And I say, I don't take yes and no for answer. I say, you have to give me a whole sentence. So, so that's what we've been doing. And I think, I don't know if that helps or not, but I think whatever it is that they do at the clinic, I try to do more of it when she's back, so. From time to time, Gretchen would tell us, she doesn't want to go. I, we asked why. It's boring. And, and she wouldn't even say, it doesn't work. It does not work. I say, it works? What do you mean? Look at what you're doing right now. You can do this, you can do that. You're talking right now. You're eating right now. You are conversing right now. Before, you were just you know, answering yes. And no, now she voiced her opinion. She would, um, she would say, sometimes she, uh, oftentimes she would say things that surprises me. I, I cannot pinpoint one thing, but there are things, there are things that she say, it just crack us up. Gretchen represents CNS and what, what we stand for and that you're, it doesn't matter how long post your injury, it doesn't matter the severity of your deficits. She's the spirit of, of why we do this and how that perseverance and commitment really and that potential is always possible.